Okay, so I just got this 2020 Model 3 uh, a few weeks ago now, and I thought I'd do a quick uh, overview of it. Um, and I might split this video into a few different things, so like a negative, positive, and, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, so... Let's just go around the car at first. So again, this is the 2020 version. I got it in December. And uh, this is the middle of the range. So the long range version, as in it's not the performance and it's not the standard range. So uh, you can see the, the dual motor thing here. And um, this is the Midnight Silver, is what this is called, the color. And uh, sorry, it's a little dark in here. I'll do another video more outside. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what it is. Um, so, okay, let's do uh, just some, some overview type stuff. There's a billion YouTube videos out there, so um, this might be all similar information, but um, these are full LED headlights. They work awesome. I like that a whole bunch compared to what my other car was. Uh, and then let's see i didn't do any upgraded wheels these are just the standard wheels but the hubcap part was removed and i got the little uh kit to uh to cover those up these are the hubcaps that come on it they just pop right off they're just like little little clips you can see so those just clip on to the car uh, what else? Um, this is the this is the charger that comes with it, um, and I have this wired in. This only does, uh, I think it's like twenty four miles an hour, uh, but that's plenty for the sh the small range that I do, uh, which is just you know um, fifteen twenty miles a day kind of thing. Uh, so this is the little charger that it comes with. You can see here, this, they pop out right here. And so these are interchangeable depending on which, uh, which type you get. So this is actually kind of an older school. Uh, maybe if we can get a good shot there. This is kind of an older style, uh, the 1030 NEMA. And the reason I did that is just the house was already wired for that. As in, like, this was already here, so I could just pop that right in. Um, not saying it's the best, but it works fine, so no issues there. Um, okay, let's go look at some other stuff. Uh, these mirrors turn in and out. I'm sure that's pretty well known. Um, this is one of the cameras off on the side here. And another camera... Up here um, this is all glass obviously I'm sure people have already seen all of that um, so this is the door handle here you push in pull this out and then you can see the mirrors auto act and the window will drop down a little If I close it properly, you can see it, it pushes itself up. Um, you might be able to hear that, but it's kind of cold in here, so it popped on the, the heater. As soon as you open the door, it starts warming itself up. And, uh, yep. So, let's see, what else is interesting? Um, let's have a look in the back. So the back there's just a little thing underneath the that pops the trunk just like this 
Um, so this is something that I've seen a lot of people complain about, that it doesn't auto lift itself. It does kind of, but um, I'm fairly sure that this is actually on purpose so that you don't have to force it down. Because I've seen people are like, oh, we'll get aftermarket arms for this. But it's like, well, yeah, but then that makes it very difficult to pull down. And you can do it in like a two-step. You can pull it down partially. And then it will just kind of hold itself. And then you can reposition and actually like close it the rest of the way. So I don't really have a problem with it. I, apparently people are really grumpy about that. I think it's weird. Um, they have... I don't know if you can see this, but they do have little uh, grabber handles here, so that it helps you close that. And let me let me see if I can fix the lighting here. Hold on. Okay, so you can probably see that a little bit better. Um, so there's actually a little little hole down here you can drop some stuff into. Um, it's pretty decent space in here. I did get this plastic cover and then um, the there's a little additional space it's down there. And let's see. So some people say that this is actually open in some of the earlier models. I don't know why they changed that. But on mine, it is closed up like that. And uh, here you can see the, the handles a little bit better. So that is the trunk. It's decent size. Um, nothing too crazy there. And come around on this side. Nothing too new and exciting. Yeah, so back on the suspension thing, um, I do feel like there are times when you're driving along and um, it seems like the suspension like completely gets bottomed out. So it's like, I don't know, going over a train track or something like that. And I don't know, I was a little bit disappointed with that. It seems like for as expensive of a car, it shouldn't, shouldn't do that, but I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm just off base there. And um, another thing is that, like, as the front end is going over stuff, there doesn't seem to be, like, a lot of, like, isolation in this area. And so you end up, you end up feeling a lot of, like, what the front end is doing as it goes over, like, train tracks and stuff like that. And, I don't know, it just makes it feel maybe not quite as nice um, for as expensive a car as it is. Um, but honestly, I might be being nitpicky because, uh, I haven't driven a lot of BMWs and up, maybe they have also the same issue. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, my other, my other complaint, which is kind of maybe weird is that, um, this is actually on the on the seating, but I feel like I don't fit amazingly well into these seats here. I feel like my, my, my butt, <laughs> I guess, like really pushes up against this side here. And I almost feel like I'm just sitting on, sitting on this side, like, like, like in this area, instead of like completely in this part of the seat. Um, so I think, you know, like if this, if this was like another inch, inch and a half wider, it would be a lot more comfortable for me. Again, maybe that's, maybe that's on purpose. I'm not sure. Maybe that's because they're trying to, you know, make it so you don't slide around a lot when you're doing, when you're cornering. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit odd to me. I've definitely sat in some seats that were more comfortable. However, you know, that's my only thing though. Like I love how the cushion is and the back feels great. And I like, I like the head position and all of the adjustments and the cushioning is great. It's just, 
it just feels like it should be slightly wider in this area um, for my big fat butt, I guess. Um, and let's see, what else, what else, what else? Oh, um, so this, the, the turn signal stuff, I don't know, I find it a little bit weird because it's very hard to actually like put it into the full turn signal mode. This, the, the amount of effort that I have to put on this. Um, I know that's kind of nitpicky, but it's kind of annoying sometimes, um, how hard that is to turn. Another thing on the steering wheel stuff, uh, I find that this is hard to turn at low speeds, even when I have it set to comfort. I've tried all the different settings, but sometimes this feels like it's actually a bit hard to turn. Um, now when you're driving it, it feels awesome and I have no problems with it and like the weight of the steering wheel and all of that. But when you're at low speeds, it, it does seem like it's a little bit more difficult than you might think. Um, and again, maybe I'm just not used to it and it's different. So, um, yeah. So those are, those are kind of my negatives. Uh, so let's go through them again. Negatives are, sometimes I feel like the suspension, you just can feel too much of it in the cabin. It makes it feel a little bit less premium, I think. Um, I feel like it bottoms out the suspension sometimes. That could be in my head. I might be wrong about that. I'm not sure. However, it handles awesome. So you can take corners incredibly fast. And when you're on like highway speeds, it feels great. This is more just about like driving around on like somewhat like a, like a rocky driveway or uh, over train tracks kind of thing, which we happen to have a lot where I live. So that's probably why I notice it a lot more. Um, the, the, the turn signals, I found them hard to actually fully engage. I uh, didn't completely love that. The steering at low speeds seems like it's not super easy. In fact, I feel like if my wife was driving it, it would be hard for her sometimes. Um, I don't know. Maybe something's wrong with it. I, I'll have to ask Tesla about that. Uh, so, yeah. And then, for some reason, my big fat butt doesn't seem like it fits completely well into the front seat if that was just like another inch or two and I feel like I don't have that big of a butt but <laughs> I don't know um and like I said maybe they're doing that on purpose because they want you to not like slide around on the seat uh if people have input on that I'd I'd like to hear that so um okay so on the pro side though so the acceleration is amazing I love being able to just charge it at home and not going to the gas station that's amazing uh i love the looks of the car it looks super classy i really like the metallic gray uh midnight silver i think is what they call it uh how it looks in the camera it doesn't look like this in real life you really need to go see one in real life uh because the camera's doing something funky with like it almost looks purple or something like it really doesn't to <coughs> in, re in, in real life so I would recommend checking it out also um, it might look strange in the camera because I do have um, the wide angle lens on so keep that in mind I'll do another one like outside and just do like a walk around kind of thing so I'll try to get that posted at some point um, other good things I really like that it comes with these uh, pretty decent looking wheels underneath mm -hmm. the arrow um so it kind of gives you you know both options for it um I, although honestly like <laughs> i almost regret not getting the the nicer uh rims because now i've seen a few cars around with those and i think that they do look pretty nice so i kind of maybe regret that uh i don't i don't regret uh the black interior i i really think the white Will, would have, would have shown gunk over a while. So, uh, I like that a lot. Let's see. The, the self-driving stuff has worked awesome 
I love that. Uh, the the sentry mode, that's really cool where all the cameras will like watch your car and then you can pull that up on your computer. I think that's really awesome. So there's a lot of really, really good stuff about this car. Uh, I think it's worth it. The, the things I complained about, honestly, are probably user-specific. Like, I happen to maybe have a wide butt, and that's maybe why the seat doesn't work for me. I'm not sure. Um, it's not uncomfortable enough that I would get rid of the car, though. So just keep that in mind. And, yeah, I mean, the acceleration is awesome. I love it. Every time I get in it, just... Yeah, it's just super smooth. The stereo, oh, yeah, the stereo is amazing. Probably the best uh, sound system that I've ever had in a car. Um, really impressed with that. I, I didn't get a chance to try out the standard range stereo, so I don't know if that's significantly worse, but I do know in the long range and performance, they have the same sound system, and it's incredibly good. Um, big fan of that. So, okay, well, that's kind of my review for now. Uh, I'm probably going to do a bunch of other ones coming up. Um, oh, and then I guess before I end it, um, fit and finish stuff. So I didn't have any issues. I think the panel gaps are <laughs> completely fine. I had, a, I had a Honda Civic that I bought brand new that honestly had way worse inconsistencies with panel gaps and that was a first model year honda civic i think they've cleaned those up since then so i'm just saying like i don't know people give tesla crap for that but it's like eh. i had a honda that had crappy panel gaps too so um yeah oh uh and there is one other thing design wise that i think is odd so you can see i have some like dirt showing here and back there i don't think these fenders are good enough to prevent this from eventually kind of like damaging this paint over time um so what i'm gonna do probably is, is get this wrapped with the paint protection stuff uh to prevent issues but i think this is a design flaw now i read some stuff that um it might not be a design flaw, but that they might have chosen to like wrap the body like this, that which ends up causing a lot of this gunk to go up into the car um, for aerodynamic reasons. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just feel like that's gonna ruin the paint over time. So hopefully the paint protection is enough. And I wish they, I don't know. I almost wish that, you know, some of the car companies are just doing this as like plastic. And I know that like that looks cheaper, but you know you don't have to worry about the pa the paint getting messed up and then rust. Rust is way worse than it looking like plastic, I think. Um, but it's just my opinion, I suppose. Um, and the same is true back here. <laughs> like you can see that the wheel actually comes here, and I don't actually hit the fender until like about up here. So. All of this is going to come back and catch all underneath here on there. And I just think that's going to wear the paint out eventually. Um, so again, I'm going to get this like wrapped with paint protection stuff. Now, I did get these, um, these fender guys. But um, I think this is for the other side. But... I, this is the company, mud flaps, but, um, what I'm worried about is that these, actually, these edges, because they, like, sit right on it, uh, you know, like, actually doing damage to here, so I'm not actually sure if I'm going to use these, and then I've also did some more reading that, like, these will affect your range a bit as well, um, and so, I don't know if I'm going to end up putting these on, but anyways, I, I think this is something that should be addressed, whether they do plastic down here or, I don't know. I'm not really sure what they can do, but I just, I'm fairly sure this is gonna get all messed up. I mean, I've only had it for a little, a couple weeks and all this mud and gunk down here. So, 
yeah. Again, that is not a reason to not buy one. You can easily get that, some paint protection put on there for like 300 bucks. It's really like not that big of a deal, but it's just kind of annoying that they didn't deal with that up front somehow. So anyways, um, again, I would buy this again. I love it. The acceleration is amazing. It does have a premium feel. There's a couple things here and there, but uh, overall, um, I'm a big fan. And now, so one of the reasons I think it's worth it is where I live in Colorado, you also get the $5,000 credit. And so, you know, knocking this down 5,000 bucks from where it's priced, I think that puts it in like a more reasonable range. You know, if I had to pay full price for this without any incentives or anything like that, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's a bit rough. Um, that, that's a high price point, but, um, yeah, so, but, um, okay, well, thanks for watching, and I think I'm going to do some more, maybe more specifics as I get the car for longer, and, um, probably an outdoor, outdoors where you guys can see the paint probably a little bit better, so thanks for watching, and, uh, see you next time.